Thank you so much for joining in with us today. We certainly praise God on this May the 3rd, the first Sunday in May of 2020. God is an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. If you're tuning in with us, please make sure that you would secure you some communion elements. We will be celebrating virtual communion. For the scripture clearly states, as often we eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, we do show his death till he come. So today we want to honor Holy Communion to thank God for what his blood and his body represents in the life of the believer. I would simply go grab a glass of juice or some type of soda, whatever, whatever it is you take communion with and, and a piece of bread so that we break symbolic of the body of Jesus Christ and his shed blood. Uh, today we will be sharing out of Luke the 17th chapter. There is a powerful word from the Lord in Luke the 17th chapter beginning at verse 11. So Luke the 17th chapter verse 11 through 19. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, and as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering him, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. I'd like to use for a brief text today to encourage your heart, hopefully to change a life, and most importantly to save a soul. Really taken from the text, verse 17, it says, Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And used for a brief text today, I cannot forget. I cannot forget. Dear Lord, we thank you today. We praise you and we magnify your holy name, God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of all that's going on, you're still in charge, Father. Bless today. Move in the homes of every worshiper that's tuning in with us, Father. Send an anointing in the houses, Father. Break the yokes that someone is dealing with. Make a marriage whole before we even start celebrating, Father. Heal and bring back a child, Father. Touch your body. Heal someone, Father. Remove COVID out of somebody's body, Father. We just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This text right here is very revealing. It's one that's very popular in, in the church. It's been shared on many occasions. And it's very self-explanatory. There it were 10 lepers that were gathered outside the outskirts of Jerusalem. It's no secret that when Jesus was passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, that he was on his way back to Jerusalem. That's where he would find the lepers. The lepers were not allowed to stay in Jerusalem because leprosy was a highly contagious, communicable disease. And once one had it, it had an effect upon that individual with leprosy. Would, it would begin to erode the skin. It worked on the eyes and the pupils would begin to become enlarged. It had slowly disforming functions of the facial cavity. Leprosy would require that a man leave his wife and children and move on the outskirts of time, ultimately for a death sentence to do nothing but die. This was very strange because if there was a need and there was a consoling ministry of the early church, it was not a healing ministry when it came to lepers. These gentlemen, when by the fact that they were out of, on the outskirts of time, gave evidence that they had already shut down their businesses. They had already moved and vacated from their families. They had already been to the priest and tried everything humanly possible to deal with this disease. But here it is, Jesus just showing up, doing what Jesus always does. He always shows up and it says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. Just reading and massaging the text right here. None of this happened by accident. The text says Luke, the physician, gave a very crystal clear understanding. He said it came to pass, meaning that it was in Jesus' timing that he would pass through that area of Samaria and Galilee. Unlike many that we deal with today, notice that the text says that as he went to Jerusalem, 
We have a bad problem, and one of the blessings of this COVID-19 environment is, is God has given us a reminder that church is not confound to the building, the property, the lot, the name, the denomination, who hangs on the plaque at the door, but church is about the power of God's love moving in the hearts of those that believe Jerusalem was Christ's worship place. Jerusalem was the center of the temple. Jerusalem was his support base where the disciples were gathered together to get strength and energy to make a difference. Jerusalem was the home of the, the multitude of his miracles. Jerusalem was the birthplace that was paid for by the blood of Mary and Joseph ancestors. And so Jerusalem represented a significant part to the body of Christ. But yet when God was on his business, the body Bible did not say that they came and visited him in Jerusalem. It did not say that he got up out of his office and left his study at Jerusalem. But the text says that he was on his way back to Jerusalem, which lets me know that it's not new to God that we are to worship no matter where we are. Ever since Christ has been given to the world, he's had the requirement to prepare ourselves to be a living sanctuary. Make your home your church. Make your car your church. Make your job your church. Everywhere where you go, bring church because it's the love of Christ that lives in the heart of the believer. So when he got there, it says, and as he entered into a certain village. So many times I've read this text and I missed it when the text right there says he entered into a certain village. It's amazing that when you deal with something in heartache, it has a totally different meaning in the eyesight of God versus the eyesight of man. This village was a certain village because it was a gathering of the lepers. It was a certain village because it was a home and a depot for poverty. It was a certain village because it was rejected and there was arms lift contact to come in contact with this village because leprosy was roaming in the backdrop. We have situations like that today. Poverty is something that we run away from. We believe that crime is roaming in the place. We believe that something is different is roaming in the place. They're not people that fit the standards that we've made up and we've even allowed that to creep into our churches where we seek out the those that we think are educated and those that have financial security and God looks at it so different from us. We saw a certain village that was a Wrong village. God saw a certain village where there was a village that needed to be healing because everywhere there's poverty, God has the cattle on a thousand hills. Everywhere there's sickness, there's enough healing in the hem of his garment to make the nation whole. Everywhere there are people that we consider ordinary people, God has a plan to take that which is ordinary and clean them up just like he cleansed up, cleaned up the wretch like me and change our lives to be what God would have us to be. So when God saw a certain village, Jesus saw a village that needed some healing. Jesus saw a village that needed some comforting. He saw skin that was dirty on the outside but was cleansed by the blood of the lamb. So when he saw them, there were 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off. They were trained and programmed that you don't get close to people. They were trained and programmed that you trust no one. They were trained and programmed that I'm at wit's ends and the same thing is happening to the world today. We stay away from gathering together as a body of Christ and trusting the word of God because we're trained to rely upon ourselves. We're trained to believe that I can fix anything. We're trained to believe that I'm going for mine and it's my opportunity. But when you connect with Christ Jesus, it's not my will, but thy will be done, not my way, but his way be done, not by my strength, not by my might, but it's by the power of a most high God. So when God had them there and they were standing afar off, and but then there's something beautiful about it, they recognized who he was. There's something powerful about recognizing the name of Jesus. I heard an elected official say the worst thing that could be said on the news this week in regards to COVID. He talked about it was not healing, it was not God, it was not this, but it was the power of the people. I'm here to tell you that if God does not give breath, people don't breathe. If God do not start us off, then we're not started on our way. If God does not send his spirit, then there's no right frame of mind. I can't even walk. I can't even talk. I can't even think without God holding my hand. So everything that's good that come to man comes from God. 
Man does not orchestrate anything. Man does not have the ability to heal himself. Man cannot turn the tide. The answer to the world, the answer to getting the stuff out of the air, the answer to opening back up the country is not found in legislation, it's not found in politics, it's not found in Democrat, Republican, or Libertarian, but it's found in turning back to God, acknowledging the name of God, getting serious about God, and giving God all the glory. So when he began to move on, he said they stood afar off and they cried out, God, have mercy on us. Can you help us out a little bit? Can you deal with us, master? And when Jesus saw him, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, can you imagine what that felt like? I've been waiting all this time to be healed. Everybody got me all worked up about this Jesus. Come see the man that told me about myself. Come see the man that healed me of my sins. Come see the man that has power to make a difference. Come see the man that can help you when your finances are low. Come see the man that can put your family back together. My family is still broken. My wallet is still empty. My heart is still heavy. And everybody's telling me to come see the man that can change my life. And then when I get to the man, he tells me to go back and do the same thing that I've always done. Can you see what it feels like? I don't go to church anymore because they do the same old same old. Choir sing the same song. Preacher preaching from the same Bible. Folks still requiring the same level of holiness. People still standing up telling the same story about God's healing and what God can do. Usher is still greeting me the same way they greeted me when I went to church with my grandmother. Digging, sitting on the same corner they always sat on. Tamarine player beating the same tamarine that they've always beaten. But the difference in doing was ordinary when you allow the Holy Spirit to move or you're operating under the unction of the Holy Ghost. It's not about going and doing what we always done or doing doing what we always accustomed to doing, but it's about showing up and moving in that direction and having a God that sit high and look low and know our thoughts are far off. So the good news about this story was Jesus was telling these lepers, I need you to turn back around and do what you always did, but there is something different about this time turning around. You just not going to do what you always did, but God's going to do what he always do, and he always do it very well. So when they turned around and they were going back to see the priest before they got there. God had already showed up, showed off and showed out and there was already healing in the air and so immediately the boys recommended and they saw that, you know what, we've been set free. We got to make some decisions right now. I don't see my leprosy anymore. I feel my body right now. My eyes have gone back to regular shape. Brother, you look alright. Brother, you look alright too. We've been healed. We can touch one another. I can hug my family again. They were excited and everything was just going and they just were happy about what was going. But one of them said, wait a minute. I did the same thing I always do. Went through the same process that we've already been going through. But this time there was something different. And right now it's the mystery of the text. Here you see a public versus a private battle. There were 10 that were healed. Only one came back to give God the glory. Can you imagine what it must have felt like right there in the eyes of Jesus that you gave these guys power in the air and only one came back? I thought about it and I used to be hard on them, but I understand probably some of the reasons that some of them came back for the sake of imagination. Let's divide them up into three group categories. The first one, I can see them now after they realized they were healed. Three of them said, I've been, I've been out here a long time. I need me a strong drink. I can see three saying, I need to get back home. I got grass that got to be cut. I got stuff that got to be fixed. I got paint I got to do on the barn. I need to hurry up and get back home. I can see three that probably wanted to go back, but that pool was so strong and all the others were saying, I'm going this way. They've been together all this time. They've hurt together all this time. 
So they had comfort in being together. So three of them probably said, well, I followed you this far, so maybe I'll go on with you. And possibly one of them that said, let's recommend Jesus, could have been in the group of nine that did not come back. But there was one that said, wait a minute, I understand how the group is working. And just like you, I need me some good to eat. Just like you, I got stuff to do. And I thank God, but I got family waiting on me. And just like you, I feel the peer pressure. I want to praise God, but everybody's not praising God, so it's not popular to praise God. But I can't forget what God did for me. Let's take it from the group thing, and let's take it to the personal thing. A third of the time, we want to give God what we need to give God, but we just don't feel like it. I want to read your Bible, but I just don't feel like it. I know that there's power in your word, but I just don't feel like it. I need to be at church, but I'm tired today. I just don't feel like it. I need to be sharing the word, but I just don't feel like it. I can see another third of us that saying, God, I thank you, and I'm going to give you what you want, but I'm doing it my way. My family is important. I put family in front of God. I put job in front of God. I put self in front of God. I still love you, God, but I got this other stuff, and God is sitting there with his arms open saying, who is it that gave you the family that you love so much? Who is it that gave you the job that provides for your family? Who is it that gave you the stuff and gave you the money to pay the bills for all that stuff? And now you want to reject me. And I can see another third of them that I want to praise my hand. I want to raise my hand and praise the Lord. But nobody around is talking about the goodness of the Lord. I want to stand up and give my testimony. But it's not on the program to give God the testimony. I want to shout right now in my house. But it's not in the program to shout right now in my house but this person said listen I'm not going to allow a public battle to keep me from God and I'm not going to allow a private battle to keep me from God but I'm just a nobody sentenced to death with the disease of leprosy this man stopped on his route and he gave me the gift I can't forget that before I even got to the priest there was a healing that fell down from the sky that they made a way when there seemed to be no way so I must tell Jesus I got to tell Jesus I'm on my way to tell Jesus but look how the story ends when he got to Christ he got there and Jesus said wait a minute where are the other nine were there not ten that were healed where are the other nine I mean what happened to Lisa, Angela, Pamela, Renee, Ralph, Ronnie, Rob, Bobby, Ricky, Mike, where the rest of the nine at? And all of a sudden he said, well God, I just couldn't forget. So Jesus looked at him and said, arise, go thy way, thy faith that's made thee whole. Can you imagine what must have been coming through the mind of this man? He said, Jesus, I didn't come to you for my faith to be made whole. I didn't come to you for my sins to be forgiven. I did not come to you so that everything in my life could be fortified. I came to you because I had the disease of leprosy and I needed to be healed from my leprosy but I gave you what was not enough and you gave me back more than what's enough. How many gave your life to Christ and you didn't know that he was going to heal your mind but he healed it anyway. Have anybody given your life to Christ and you didn't know that he was going to lead you in the path of righteousness but he led you there anyway. Anybody ever given your life to Christ, but you didn't know that you would have joy, unspeakable joy, but you got joy anyway. Anybody ever given your life to Christ and all of a sudden God has supplied all your needs according to your, his riches and glory. Don't know how he did it. Really don't know when he did it all, but somehow he made a way when there seemed to be no way. I cannot forget the power of what it feels like to be forgiven for my sins. I cannot forget how it feels to walk up to somebody and truly forgive my brother and sister. The Lord taught me how to do that. I cannot forget what it feels like to have angels guide in my house when they're ordered by the Lord to protect me and lead me beside the still waters. I cannot forget what it feels like to have a God that's moving through the air, protecting my body, protecting my family, protecting my worship, protecting my praise. I cannot forget 
what it feels like to have a God that has a solid promise that when this earthly body is dissolved, I got a new home in glory, not made by man. So God, I'm calling it out today. I'm asking from home to home, TV to phone, from Georgia to Maryland, wherever you are, if God has done something for you, don't ever forget that he died on that cross if you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Don't ever forget that he took his place in a bar or tomb if you're alive today. Don't ever forget that he rose on the third day and don't ever forget that church is not about the building, not about the locale, not about the place, not about the big choir and the loud message of the preacher, but church is about the word of the Lord, the power of his spirit. It's about a movement moving from heart to heart and breast to breast. It's about when men will stand up and proclaim that this is the last days, but we got a God that's king of the first and he's king of the last. Church is about when you got people that will stand up and say, God did it in my life. God did it for me. He opened up my eyes. He healed my body. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. I can never forget just what he's done for me. Ten lepers. Three of them. Eager to get back. Forgot about God. Three of them. Wanted to go back. Priorities out of place. Three of them followed the crowd. Had to please somebody. The men are counting on me. The women are counting on me. I'm arguing with the pastor because I'm representing somebody. I'm arguing with the church because I'm representing somebody. And God is simply asking all of us to be just like that one leper who used to be a leper, but thy faith has made thee whole. Represent nobody but Christ and him crucified. I cannot forget just what God has done for me. If you're here today and God is speaking to your heart and today you feel like you fit into the category of the nine, well, God has given you one more opportunity. The Bible says, work while it's day, for when night cometh, no man worketh. That's not an a.m. or p.m. analogy. That's simply a statement of faith to tell us that tomorrow is not promised. But while you can make a conscious decision today, I encourage you to surrender your heart to Jesus and choose him as your Lord and Savior. Before we break communion in my closing, I'm going to give you a prayer of salvation. If you're listening today, just add your name into this prayer and watch God forgive you, save your soul, and take total residence in your life. Dear Lord Jesus, today I admit that I am a sinner. I've done wrong, but I also acknowledge that I need you in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the ultimate sacrifice for, sacrifice for my life. Thank you, Jesus. When my heart was in certain trouble, you saw me as a certain mission for your God. Thank you, Jesus, that today, You've allowed me to understand clearly that I need you in my heart. So I ask you to come live in Lewis' heart, or whatever your name is. Take total control of my life. Forgive me. And today I start over with you. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ we pray. That night in the upper room before our Lord and Savior Jesus was arrested in the praetorium to pay the ultimate price for our sins. He met with his disciples. And he told them that day on a joyous occasion, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. It's so often you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Communion is an ordinance left on record by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It serves as a reminder and a moment of renewal. So as you join in together with me over this communion, this is the perfect time for all those that have been born again, that have surrendered their heart to Jesus. It does not matter about your age. It does not matter about your denomination. What matters about communion? If you have surrendered your heart to Jesus, ask Jesus to come live in your heart, then communion is for you. And we ask today that right in your homes that you would take and eat the spread and drink the cup, the fruit of the vine, and ask God to just go inside. Father, if there's something wrong inside of me, clean it today. If there's something that needs healing inside of me, heal it today. And I call upon this blessing because you promised in your word that you will wound our transgressions. Bruise for our iniquities. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon you. But the beautiful part of the text, it says, but by your stripes, we are healed. So at this moment, I'm going to ask all that are joining in with us over this virtual communion. Let's have a moment of prayer. And then in the comfort of your own homes, let's eat together and let's drink together. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you would touch this bread. Turn it, Father, from a natural use to a spiritual use. Somebody needs to be forgiven. Somebody's dealing with hurt and pain in the body. Somebody's struggling economically with all the COVID challenges. Someone's hurting, Father, with domestic issues, with all the close proximity, God. And right now, we pray that by the power of your cross, you would heal and remove these elements from our bodies. But most importantly, we also want to give honor to what you did at Calvary's cross. We thank you and we praise you. Father, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let everyone eat and let everyone drink together. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much. God bless you.